Hi everybody, it's New Jersey Garden. Happy summer. I wanted to do a video today just showing you my flowers. And I do have a little vegetable garden, but I can show that next week. I just want to show my flowers and talk about why I pick certain varieties of flowers and which ones are affected by um, pests. I have a big deer problem where I live and I want to just talk about um, issues I have with certain flowers and then you can decide if you want to grow some of these flowers in your yard. Right here I have a beautiful day lily. I have a lot of these day lilies. They're called Happy Returns and I started out with just a few bulbs and they I have divided them. They can be divided every I would say every three years you can divide your lilies and spread them out through your garden and I really love lilies. Uh, the only pests I really get with lilies are I get some beetles. I get these brown beetles and sometimes Japanese beetles. They like to go inside of the um, lily plants. But overall, they're not really harmed by the beetles too much. And what I've noticed is I have some browning of the leaves, which is very common with day lilies, and you can just pull those out. I also have another type of lily over here that's very popular. It's called Stelladoro. And these are nice because they don't seem to get as much browning in the leaves. They bloom really prolifically right around now, um, whereas my um, Happy Returns lilies will come back for me throughout the summer. So I have some of each. The Happy Returns are like a more of a lemon yellow color and the Stella Dora ones are more of an orangey yellow. So I enjoy having both of them in the yard. And then back here I plant a lot of um, Zinnias. Now the zinnias do get nibbled on by the deer when they're when they're small. Generally once my zinnias are established the deer leave them alone but I do get a lot of nibbles um, with the plantings of my zinnias uh, early on. So I have a lot of little zinnias in here and I had planted some um, sunflowers years ago so I am having a little bit of sunflowers popping up here and there um, probably from the birds. I also have some Canterbury Bells that I planted in here and they got really nibbled on by the deer as well. So I'm not sure I'm recommending Canterbury Bells if you have a deer problem. But those are biennials and we'll see next year how they look. And I do spray my plants with a deer spray to try to prevent um, the deer from nibbling on my plants. Opposite from the garden bed I just showed you I have just some more lilies. I also planted Sweet William in this garden bed and that got nibbled on a little bit, uh, not too much. I have some zinnias planted in here. I also have some Morning Glory. Now Morning Glory is really loved by deer and I have this trellis here so it can grow up. I grow a lot of Morning Glory so I don't mind too much when it does get nibbled on by the deer because I have, you know, I grow a lot of the Morning Glory so it ends up that I still get enough flowers, but the morning glory are really loved by deer. So you have to be careful um, with, you know, uh, your morning glory if you have deer around. So right in front I have the sweet william which will bloom next year. It's a biennial. And then I planted a lot of uh, alyssum in the garden. It attracts beneficial insects. It's this little white flower here. And it gets, <clears throat> this variety gets pretty big. It will sprawl onto the um, walkway here. So I planted those from seed. Most of my garden is planted from seed. Right here, this is a lily that hasn't bloomed yet. And here's another lily that hasn't bloomed yet. This is a red lily. And then on this garden bed, I also have a lot of those um, happy returns lilies. I have a couple juniper bushes. And then I have this really nice perennial flower that I wanted to show you that just started to come into bloom. It's a verbena and it's a little aggressive. It spreads by underground rhizomes so I have to kind of try to keep it away from this juniper plant but I just love the combination of the purple flowers um, with the blue of the juniper and then the yellow um, from the, the daylily. And I like this verbena because it doesn't get bothered by any pests and it is deer resistant. 
the deer have never nibbled on it. And then I have a little more alyssum here. There's a little bit of morning glory popping up in this garden bed as well. Verbena attracts a lot of swallowtail butterflies where I live. Over in this garden bed, there's a lot of um, sunflowers that popped up this year. So I'm going to spray those so they don't get eaten by the deer because deer love sunflowers and some of them have been nibbled on already. And then I have a lot of the Stellodoro daylilies. This is against our garage. They're in full bloom right now, so I wanted you guys to see them. I really do like daylilies because they're a pretty easy plant to grow and they're relatively pest free, like I said before. I'm trying to grow pumpkins in this bed and only one pumpkin seedling popped up. So we'll see what happens there. I have a little vegetable garden um, that I'll show in another video, probably next week. I have this flower that I really love in the garden that's pest free and does not get bothered by deer. It's called Maltese Cross and hummingbirds really like it. So next year I'm going to plant a lot more of this. I had more and they just died out on me. I had uh, quite a bit of this in a couple other spots in the garden and they just it died out on me. So it's not a long lasting perennial uh, in my garden has a reddish orange color to it. And I have seen hummingbirds on this plant. I w really wish I had more of it. It's really lovely. And I enjoy the look of the stem as well. These grew really tall for me one year and um, I'm not sure why they're back down to their lower height, but they can get pretty tall. They can even flop. And I have a lot of yarrow. Now yarrow I do really enjoy and it grows really easily in our clay soil. Um, the only issue I have with it is it really gets a lot of aphids on it, but luckily there's a lot of ladybugs that will eat the aphids. And these will be blooming in a couple weeks. I have a few different varieties of yarrow. Many different colors. This is ladies mantle. Not bothered by any pests whatsoever. The flower is like this chartreuse color. I had a lot of poppies in this bed which I showed in other videos and I'm just letting them go to seed and this is what the poppy seed heads look like. Very interesting looking. And I have some Stelladoro day lilies in here. And the catmint is in full bloom. It's really loved by um, honeybee, I mean by bumblebees rather. So I get a lot of bumblebees on this plant. Try to do a close up so you can see. The deer do not touch this plant at all. It has a scent to it. It's in the mint family. There's one more poppy still blooming. This is Princess Victoria Louise. Then I have some cor yellow Coreopsis here. Coreopsis is very easy to grow. Uh, in terms of the pests on the Coreopsis, there is one pest that's been bothering 
my coreopsis and my daisies, which I'll show you in a minute, is called the four line plant bug, and I'll show you that damage in a minute. Um, here's my lavender. It will be blooming probably in the next week. I'm going to harvest some of it and put it into a little um, sachets, sachet bags. The deer do not like lavender, but lavender is also bothered by the four line plant bug. Let me see if I can show you the damage. This hasn't been too bad this year. Um, they make little dents in the leaves. Well, I can show you the... There's the damage on the Coreopsis. They just make these little... They attempt to make holes in the leaves. And they're a little um, black and like fluorescent green adult bugs and then when they're nymphs they're red and black I used to have a lot of daisies in this bed they started dying out on me and I had pulled out some because I had too many I thought um, now daisies these are Alaska Shasta daisies are the Alaska variety and for some reason they're really short this year. They're usually very tall Like three and a half feet tall This year they're pretty short and there is a pest that bothers my daisies other than the four line plant bug there is um, Something that eats the petals So that's why I'm not really going to replace these daisies. I've been having trouble with them um, The petals just get eaten off by something so um, There is a um, oriental lily and my oriental lilies uh, luckily don't get bothered by the deer. I do spray in case the deer want to nibble but the oriental lilies the only thing that bothers them again is the beetles sometimes get into the lilies but um, generally they're pest free. So I'll have more daisies opening up in the next few days. It's the middle of the day, so I'm trying to stay away from too much shadowing. There's more cat mint. I really love these poppy seed heads. They're really neat looking. And there's a whole bunch of yarrow in the garden. I used to spray, for the aphids I, that I get on the yarrow, I used to spray with neem oil and that didn't help all that much. And then I tried insecticidal soap, which does work fairly well. And now I just kind of let the ladybugs um, deal with them. I don't really find that it damages the plant having all the aphids on them. So I stopped worrying about the aphids so much. There's some more cat mint. And then I have some brown-eyed Susan. Now brown-eyed Susan I love, but it does get nibbled on by the deer. Um, especially early on in the season, so I have to spray that. There's crepe myrtle. It's basically pest-free. It blooms in late August and September. And then in this garden bed I planted a whole bunch of um, gladiolus, which I really love. And I don't, I haven't had any problems with it, with, with any pests. Although I will be spraying them to make sure the deer don't, don't eat them. But um, I don't know if you can see any here, but I planted um, some gladiolus about two weeks ago and they're just popping up now. I really enjoy the yellow color of the Stelladoro daylilies. 
Now here's another plant I have a lot of in my yard. It's Liatris. It's not bothered by any pests and it's rarely eaten by deer in my yard. Sometimes early in the spring there's some nibbles, but in general um, it's a great plant for me. Um, and butterflies and bees really like this plant and I'll show that when that's in bloom. So I have quite a bit of the Liatris. I have more brown-eyed Susans in here, and there is a, a lilac shrub. This year I planted a lot of blanket flower because I had lost some due to disease. There was a disease that I got that created all these white spots on the leaves. Um, this year I planted a lot of blanket flower, also known as Gallardia, in the garden. I had a lot of it in the past and after a few years it got a disease that created uh, white spots all over the leaves so I had to pull them all out and these are planted from seed back in February and they haven't um, flowered yet but I'm hoping by August I'll get some flowers. I have a lot of these seedlings in the garden. And as you can see this um, brown eyed Susan got nibbled on by the deer. So. Although I love brown-eyed Susan, it's been a little problematic with the deer. Cone flower is right here, and the deer will leave this alone once it's blooming, but they've nibbled on it a little bit in the beginning. A lot of my plants get nibbled on just like early in the spring by the deer, and then the deer leave them alone. A lot of the flowers I'm describing are also very drought tolerant. I don't water my garden all that much, um, if at all. We have. Uh, you know, thunderstorms in the summer once or twice a week at least, and I pick I pick a lot of plants that are drought tolerant, so that I don't have to water. Like the blanket flower is a great example, um, and the blanket flower does have a pest. It does have the four line plant bug um, that will bother it, and um, so I, I had that problem in the past. But I still like to grow it because it's so drought tolerant and the blooms are really nice and I just, I enjoy it because the deer generally leave it alone. There's more Liatris. We have a lot of dragonflies in the garden today. There's just a um, cedar, cedar tree here. There's some more of the Stelladoro daylilies. I know they're a really common lily, but I still really like it because it just adds some nice color. There's more Liatris, and then I'll show you. I planted some gladiolus in here too. Very excited for the gladiolus. I love gladiolus. You see a little bit popping up. And then over here I have a clematis, which is lovely. And I'll try to show you some of these blooms. The clematis responds really well to fertilization. I do spray it for deer with deer spray just in case it gets nibbled on, but actually the deer have never bothered my clematis, um, but I do spray it just in case. The clematis sometimes gets some browning of the leaves. We have it by our mailbox here. Then there's more Liatris. And over here I have a lot of peonies that just finished blooming. And I did a peony tour uh, about a week ago, um, which, you, which I will post up above. That, they were lovely. And this year I'm gonna leave the seeds heads on, seed heads on. I usually trim off the seed heads. But this year I'm going to leave them on just to see if I get any little seedlings. I have had about two or three seedlings develop in the past, 
um, just on their own by leaving my peonies alone. So I'm just going to see if any seedlings develop. Over here on the ground, I think, I, I don't know if this is zinnia or sunflower, but there's one sunflower over there and I will be spraying that. This is um, a dogwood tree. Now this is um, maybe going to bloom this year. This is um, more gladiolus. I didn't dig up my gladiolus bulbs. I, I never do. Maybe this year I will start doing that because I should be digging them up in this climate. But I left my gladiolus alone and I get these little... Um, sometimes I get gladiolus some years and sometimes I don't. And this year I can't really tell if I'm going to be getting any gladiolus. But this is from... Uh, gladiolus bulbs. Over here this is coneflower. That'll be blooming in a couple weeks. And then over here I planted black-eyed Susan and I think I read that there's like over 20 varieties of black-eyed Susan. Um, so I'm not sure which variety this one is. It's not the variety that I thought it was going to be. Um, and the deer have been nibbling on this, so we'll, I'll let you know if this holds up to the deer. But they haven't bloomed yet. I'm going to come back around because I forgot to show you something exciting. Um, this is just the peony plants. I planted some zinnia down here in the front. But what's exciting is our town had a uh, plant giveaway and they were giving away little seedlings of shrubs and trees and looks like some mushroom over there. Um, and they, we picked up a redbud tree um and it's just a tiny ceiling it was just a little bare root that we put in the ground i left the tag on for now and it's doing okay so that's a little redbud tree we'll see what happens and then we also picked up um some dogwood shrubs. This is called silky dogwood. I think there's five of them in here. And I've never grown silky dogwood before. I, I know a lot of dogwoods you prune them in the early spring and you can prune them back pretty hard. Um, this particular variety, I think, can get really big. So, what that means is I'm going to be kind of rearranging the garden and moving a lot of these plants to other areas. And the reason we planted these dogwood shrubs here is because our garage is nearby and it's um, we have an older house. And I kind of wanted to hide the garage from the street. Um, just to make it look a little prettier. So, you can see all the little holes that were made by those ground bees. They're gone now, but I had a lot of nesting ground bees that really got into the mulch and kind of like um, made these little holes everywhere. But here's another one of the silky dogwoods. If any of you out there have grown dogwood shrubs, especially the silky dogwood, I'd love to hear from you just to see um, how big they get. Um, so I'm going to have to move this lavender plant. Um, lavender doesn't do so great with moving, so it may not make it, but that's why I'm growing more lavender this year. I didn't show you them, but I have little seedlings of lavender in the yard that I grew from seed. And there's another silky dogwood shrub and there's one more and 
this one, which is doing pretty well. And I think it has, I don't remember if it's blueberries or white berry. White, I think it has blueberries and white flowers in the spring. So I'll keep you guys posted on this dogwood shrub. I'm kind of excited because we don't have a lot of shrubs in the yard and it would be nice to prune them in the spring and um, see how they how big they get. And over here there are three gladiolus bulbs that I planted recently. Very excited to see those come up. Here on the deck I have some flowers growing. I have some pansies that I grew from seed. They're doing really well even in the heat. I love the multicolored ones. And then I have some petunias that they were looking great. I, I bought these at a garden center and I decided I wanted to add a little alyssum to the pot. So I moved some things around yesterday and um, so it's looking a little floppy, but um, I love this color of the petunia. So we'll see how that comes out. There's some white in there, um, some hot pink and purple. There's lobelia, which I usually grow in pots. It, it can get nibbled on by deer if you leave it in the yard. So I usually grow it in containers and it still hasn't bloomed yet, but it's about to bloom. I think that will be blue. Um, there's some more petunias I just transferred into another container with some alyssum. I have one squash growing in a pot. I'll talk about the vegetables next week, but I will say I'm excited that I think I see some um, flowers about to develop on this squash. I put foil around the base of my squash plants in the garden and in this one here to prevent the vine borer from attacking it, um, which I'll get more into that next week. And then over here I just have another container of petunias. I really enjoy petunias and hummingbirds like petunias too. They really like morning glories as well. They like tubular flowers. This is a little garden bed that we have under our deck. And a lot of peonies just bloomed here and I'm going to leave the peony buds on them just to see if I get any seedlings because in the past I have had three seedlings develop in this spot down here, um, which I transferred to the front garden bed. So it does look a little messy right now with all the petals from the peonies, and I'm gonna leave them on this year just to see what develops. Um, I could also cut off the peony buds and just save the seeds that way, but I'm just gonna see what nature does. And then um, down here we have a beginnings of uh, cornflower blooming here and I planted some additional cornflower in here this year and I love cornflower it doesn't get bothered by pests the deer leave it alone there's a little bit of um, California poppy in here that's another plant that I enjoy I'll show you a little more of that in a minute um, but the California poppy started dying out in this bed so I added some Johnny jump up violas. And the, the ants are nibbling on them a little bit. There's a little bit of nibbling on some of the flower petals, but in general, they're doing fine. And I had a lot of um, this perennial basket of gold alyssum, and that's all the seeds from it. And I can trim those off or I can just leave them, leave them alone, but this ferny plant here is the California poppy. Also in here, I have some Canterbury bells, and I'm hoping the deer will not bother these guys in this bed, but those will bloom next year. So over here, at the base of our deck stairs, we have California poppy, and I kind of want to move this um, back into the garden, but it looks like this. It's a really lovely plant. It only opens up when it's sunny out. And um, the blooms last quite a while. So I may dig this up and move it. 
Um, but that's what's going on in this garden bed right now. And we'll take one last look at the Maltese cross. I just enjoy that there are never any pests on this plant. And I love hummingbirds, so it's great that the hummingbirds like it. Well, thank you so much for watching this garden tour. Next week I'll do a vegetable garden tour and I'll keep showing you my flower bed. I know it's not the biggest um, garden out there, but I enjoy growing flowers and sharing the flowers with you all. So thank you so much for watching and please subscribe. Thank you.